Uh, yeah, I want to go in too. There's so much going on. Fucking fires and world's on Trump. fire. Oh. Trump doing Trump things. The Trumpiest of the Trumpest. Yeah, um, man. He like has been lying about COVID since February. Well, and then still blames Biden. We could save it for the show. Yeah, Jesus. Fuck. But uh, we were talking before we um, hit the red button, the, the magic red button, about the fact that people are starting to hit their data limits for their home internet service, and I think that's absolutely ridiculous uh, because you get charged if you have Cox community. And I think this is the way with every ISP provider, but there's only two big ones in, in the whole entire country. And Cox communications is one. And I think they're like the sub Cox is a subsidiary company of cable one or something like that. But they charge you when you go over your data limit. Now I'm not saying that this should, this should not be the case. Um, during just the coronavirus, it should not be the case with the fact that technology, everything we do is based on these internet feeds coming into our homes. And we already pay out the ass for horrific service. And then you get yeah. penalized if you go over that certain little itty bitty little number that they give you, which unless you have some type of regulator or tracker on your ISP data, you really don't know if you're hitting that number or not. Yeah. I mean, we get an alert because I'm about to hit it, but we got three days, but I got to upload all these videos in that day, in those days. So I'm going to have to like put everything on my laptop and go somewhere else. So I don't use up all my data to upload the videos on the YouTube channel this month. Who's telling you that you're at your max or you're about to hit your threshold. Who's telling you that? Well, Cox has an app. And right. When when you hit when you hit seventy five percent, it gives you an alert. Right. And so and you can track it. What I'm what the point that where I'm getting to is that the person that's providing you the service that has put the limitations on it is telling you that you're about to hit that benchmark. How do you really know? Have you sat down and looked at everything and calculated everything that you've downloaded or uploaded? Who's to say that they're they they're just like, oh, this person may or may not be close, so let's yeah. let's threaten them. You know what I mean? Unless you have a piece of equipment that is monitoring your your data in and out in and out. I actually have one of those. I actually have it built into my router in my home that I can go in and my router tells me how much data has moved in and out of my, uh, in and out of my, of my home. And it has had, ha in the past, it has had a variance with what Cox's app said. Where Is Co it like a big variance? Or? It was a big variance where if mm -hmm. now I'm, 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 I'm complaining, but I'm also in that part of the market where I have unlimited data in my home. So if you need yeah. to upload those videos, Jake, you're more than welcome to come use my, my internet, but I might take you up on that. If, if I didn't have, and the reason why I have that, that regulator is because I do have unlimited. And I also want to know what my, my teenage kid is uploaded in the middle of the night or downloading yeah. in the middle of the night. You know what I mean? But I think that it's just another way of Cox communication fleecing us and squeezing us dry okay, again. Let me just say this real quick. Yes. You Jack. don't want to know what your kid is downloading, bro. <laughs> you, you don't just let him do his thing. You don't want to know. Um, I, 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 um, <laughs> you're right. And you the, don't want to know. And the few times that I did find out, I wish I hadn't. Now it's not yeah. something that I brought up to him. I just stopped looking at what was coming, uh, what was feeding out of his direct line in his room. Now this, this may be the most millennial thing I could say. Okay, but internet is like at the point now where it's almost like a surface. You know what I mean? What do you mean by a surface? A service. Oh, a service. S e r v i c e. Yeah, rhymes with cervix. <laughs> um, it does not. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> kind of does. Uh, um, uh, yeah, it, like 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 water or electricity. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. 
I don't know what I'm trying to say here. But You're like, saying it's just, that it's our, it's our lifeline. It, it, yeah. it, it, it's literally the way that without it, I don't, uh, without it, unless you're Amish, I don't know how you could survive without it. Everything we do in and around our lives is connected through the internet. And now in the middle of this pandemic, that has doubled down. We especially, work. Yeah. Especially in the times of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. We work through our internet. Our, our, our um, home security systems are through our internet. We pay our bills through our internet. We watch our TV through our internet. And you know what? And all these other companies that are out there that, and this also throws me off when you see so many companies advertising free TV, you get TV. It's not free TV. They're giving you an antenna or they're giving you a connection. That's going to go through your internet that you're going to have to pay for because you're already paying for your internet. So it's not free TV. The crazy thing to me is back in the day, I hate Cox in, communications back in my day, back in internet, my day, internet was just unlimited. Like it, that was just yeah. like the stock. And then out of nowhere, it's like, yeah, we, you get like, you know, a terabyte of data. Yeah. Which, you, if you're doing like what we do or like you're working from home, you're doing tons of zoom calls or you have to upload files or you're teaching a class and like your company's not going to cover your internet bill, even though they probably should. If you're working from home, honestly, actually, no, they shouldn't. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. And I think that when, when remote learning started, um, there is such a convenient or not remote learning remote work started. There's such a huge convenience with that depending, sure. depending on your role. Now, if you are, if you're part, if you have a position that has There's a all- huge data dependency, then I think that, you know, maybe like if you're editing videos and having to upload videos on a continuous basis, then yeah, yeah. they, they may should, they should be some little underwriting there. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're a, a video editor, yeah. And you work from home, you should they should probably cover at least some of your internet. A portion. A portion. Yeah. Well, cuz what it makes me think of is like if you work a job and they buy you a cell phone, right? Some jobs do that. My I job s- did that for a while. Yeah. Um and, you know, they pay for your cell phone because it's like we don't want you to have to use your own cell phone cuz that's not really fair. Uh, but you make us use our own internet and like I- I'm going to Yes, there is a convenience to working at home. Oh, totally. But, there, but there's also an inconvenience from working at home. Uh the fact that your home is now your office. I mean, like it's it's a it, mental inconvenience, Jake. I see what you're saying. It's a mental inconvenience. Well, and it's a space inconvenience too, where it's like I have to dedicate a whole section of my house to work and like I have to like put my kids in it. Like I have to have a separate space for my kids. If you have kids and it's not really that convenient. I do. I have seen reports though, that say that a lot of people are more productive when they work from home. Oh, that's been a, that's been a mortal lock since the eighties, since the late eighties, the reports are saying that people are way accomplished more. You're more focused when you're at home. And there is, I think that Jake, there's a higher on the scale of convenience and inconvenience of working remotely from home. It's definitely of favors the side of convenience when you have to think about especially and it might not feel that way when you first start doing it and in your line of work and what you do professionally it's impossible for you to do what you do from home but for i i struggled with it for a couple of months after i took an in-home role with my day job. And then I started to really see the benefits of it. You know what I mean? The fact that I'm not paying $110 a month for dry cleaning. My, my car is, is almost four years old and has less than 40,000 miles on it. You know what I mean? So there are some benefits and Mm -hmm. yes, it's a little inconvenience when you, when you have a smaller space, but if you have a home where you can kind of stretch out and you can build out your own little workspace, then it it does it does play to you and i love the fact that when i work from home pre covid i would go downstairs and barbecue my lunch you know right to fire up I'm, the old gas grill and barbecue a burger but like just because it's better for you doesn't mean you know that the company the company is still profiting from you oh yeah 100% you know what I mean? they're also so like, still paying me they they are still paying you but they're paying they're paying you the same and now you have to use your own internet data. 
I can see that. And you're right. You know what I mean? And I can go even older than you, Jake. Uh, you were talked about cell phones in, in your age. I remember when companies used to pay your pager cost. They used to pay for your pagers because they wanted you on call. <laughs> That's how old I, my ass yeah. is. I had a pager when I was in kindergarten <laughs> <laughs> to like message my mom to pick me up from school or whatever. <laughs> yeah, little codes, you know, 13 yeah. means I'm by the bus, 14 uh, upside down then high. <laughs> 16 you don't want to know what that means oh 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 pick up sticks five six seven eight <laughs> what is up boyos welcome to the jake and cory podcast i'm jake that is cory what up, Corey? My blood pressure is up right now, Jay, with this this orange monster. Okay, <laughs> tell me about it. No, tell me about it. Okay, <laughs> this is. <laughs> oh, literally, tell you about it. That wasn't a no for uh, real. Tell yeah. me about it. <laughs> Welcome everybody. It's the Jake and Corey podcast. Uh, thank you for downloading, streaming the show. Okay, this is the only Subscribe, way. Subscribe, I- like, click the bell. <laughs> I am I'm not going to say that this is these are my words. They're not my words, but they are the perfect expression if I was to put words to the way that I'm feeling right now. Okay? So this is from my buddy comedian Ben Glebe. Ben okay. Glebe from his Instagram page and I'm reading this. So I'm giving Ben 100% uh, credit for this, but Ben said it best. Shout out Ben. Go follow him or whatever. He didn't play it down. He denied its existence, denied its danger, called it a Democrat host hoax, told us not to wear masks, pushed dangerous treatments, blamed China, blamed the CDC, withdrew from who took no responsibility, questioned credibility of medical experts and encouraged big gatherings. Our president is a murderer. You blew your stack for for years when Hillary didn't take swift enough action and four Americans in Benghazi lost their lives, said it made her unfit for office. But Trump lied to us, set on this, called it a hoax when it is now clear he knew how deadly it is and hid those facts while almost 200,000 Americans lost their lives and counting. If this hasn't changed your mind, you are brainwashed, hypocritical, and very, very dumb. From that dangerous to that. Extremely. From my friend Ben Glebe said it best. When this broke, Jake, I lost my ass. Well, I was going to say, maybe we should add some like context if anyone doesn't know what happened. Please. Um, so, like, uh, basically what happened was this guy, what's his name? Bob Woodard. Is that his name? Yes. Am I mistaken that? Yes, I basically, believe so. Basically, he, he's been conducting a string of interviews with Trump, um, and he released one from February. February. We are now in September. <laughs> February, where Trump said, this thing is airborne. This thing is more deadly than the flu. This thing is not just targeting old people. It's targeting young people. Everything that every, everyone's been saying um, now, but in February, we weren't even locked down yet. We didn't even know it was an issue yet. Um, and then he also said, I didn't want to play, a, play it up because I didn't want to spread fear, quote unquote. And uh, I, I mean, what else? I, I don't have the direct quote in front of me, but something along those lines and yeah it's it's just it's crazy um and then everything you just said and you got to realize jake one thing is that uh yeah we don't have the quotes in front of us but folks this isn't something that bob woodward was just telling us and repeating there are fucking audio tapes Mm -hmm. audio tapes of this but not but audio tapes of this and i have a stack 
a stack of funeral notifications for people that have died from this coronavirus. Yeah, it's crazy. I have, I now have several family members who have it. I have uh, friends and acquaintances and fans of my show that have reached out to me asking for my prayers and condolences for family members, young and old, that are dead from this thing. How in the hell is this guy not brought up on charges? And I want to I want to point this out, right? Because a lot of what the Republicans would say, and I want to put their point of view out there and then just totally tear it the fuck down. <laughs> um, so their whole point of view is, well, Trump wanted to do this to not spread fear, right? And that's his thing. He didn't want the country to collapse because of fear. But what does fear of COVID look like? Fear of COVID, what does that mean? Putting on double gloves? Right. Putting on more hand soap? The worst case scenario, and this is what Trump was worried about, is people would say, I don't want to go to work. And that's what Trump was worried about. Trump was more worried about the stock market and prices than he was about the American people and human lives. And that is just the bottom line. He was scared of fear of people not going to work, of people closing down their businesses, of stock prices lowering. That's what fear of COVID looks like. Because fear of COVID, what is, it doesn't mean anything other than that, other than like I take like 60 showers because I don't want to have COVID on my skin or whatever. That's if you ha when you it's not have like a, people are going to start burning down buildings because they're scared of COVID. That doesn't make sense. They're just going to stay home. His whole, from, from so many people's viewpoint, his whole entire presidency from the moment he announced he was running to present day has been based in fear. So him, if what would, what would have fear of COVID looked like? I'll tell you what fear of COVID would have looked like. People would have protected themselves without having to be told to protect themselves. People that have a fear, fear is also a part of knowledge, knowing what is out there, what is existing, and how to protect yourself from it. It's not the fact that we were going to say, oh, there's a deadly airborne disease. I'm going to stop working. So instead of him. So if he thinks that that's what was going to happen, what did happen is that in people instead of people saying, I I'm not going to work now, it's I can't work. Yeah. Well, I think his thought process was I can downplay this until the election. There was no thought process. The man doesn't think when it comes to this COVID thing. But it doesn't. But the thing is, he doesn't think. The thing is, Corey, he, it's working. His fan base is all for him. It's fucking mind boggling. It makes no fucking sense. Dude, I, I turned on literally this. This is the craziest shit. Like. I put on Fox News just because I was curious. Like, what are they? I put on Fox News from time to time just to see what they're saying over there, right? And I, I put on Fox News, and Sean Hannity is up on the screen. This is the day that all that stuff came out about Trump. The same day, and they're they're running stories. This is their stories. Joe Biden has been downplaying the coronavirus since February, and it's like. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Joe Biden wasn't the president. Joe Biden didn't have the inside information that Donald Trump had. You know, Joe Biden, not only is he not president, he currently doesn't hold a office at all. So, like, Joe Biden had no skin in the game. He was just, like, probably downplaying it because he didn't know better and was like, I, I mean, yeah, we'll probably be fine. Like, he probably just didn't know. Joe Nancy Biden playing down the virus is the same as my neighbor playing down the right. virus. It means nothing. He didn't nothing. know. He didn't know the information. He didn't talk to the the dude over in China like like Trump He did. didn't have Fauci. He didn't. He, Joe Biden yeah. wasn't talking to the CDC. Joe Biden wasn't part of the WHO. 
the World Health, by the way, who? World Health Organization, a group of leaders from other countries that come together to curve pandemics. You, 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 you literally, he, Trump literally turned off our connection to the people that are there that are supposed to collectively come together, put politics aside and collectively come together to protect the human race. We're not a part of that anymore, folks. Yep. This is not a partisan issue anymore. It's not. No. It never had. Uh, dude, it's in, it's invigoratingly ridiculous. And, and, and I hate quoting polls because polls could be a group of seven people. Polls could be a group of 7,000 people. And when the news media, no matter what it is, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, whatever, when they quote polls, you don't know how many people are in those polls. And if it's a poll of a thousand people, it's not really projecting the the uh, an accurate representation of America's viewpoint. You can't tell me that middle America, Montana is expressing the way that um, the hippies in San Diego, California feel. But these polls that are out there now are stating that there's like a 1% difference between uh, Trump and Biden. I don't, I, I don't get how there are still people are just because of the word Republican, the Republican party. I don't see how people can just ignore, ignore the malice that's coming from one human being. That's being derived from one human being. But just because he has an R painted on the front of his chest means that whatever he does is OK because he's on your team. Look, I've, I, I, I work for the Phoenix Suns, not currently, but I have. And when I'm shooting a game and there's a team member out there that just does something ridiculously stupid, do you know what the rest of the team does? They get his ass on the bench. They sit him down. They coach him on the side where he's not affecting the game. The rest of the team doesn't just sit there and say, oh, well, he fucked up. So I'm going to go ahead and cheer him on anyway, just because he's on my team. That's not how it works. But it seems like that's the way some Republicans are looking at 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 uh, Trump's presidency. Because he's on my team, I'm ignoring everything else he's done. But he but but he's on my team. If Biden started acting like an idiot. Whether I'm on his side or not. And I'm not even on Biden's team. He starts acting like an idiot. I'm come. I'll be blasting his ass, too. If this was Obama doing the same thing, I'd be blasting his ass, too, about this. I don't get this. I don't understand how there is any right thinking person that can say this is OK. And this is the person that is going to be successful in leading this country to the next level. Yeah, I, I agree. One one hundred percent. It's it's confusing, man. I, I don't know why people are so obsessed with parties. First of all, uh, makes no sense to me. I think most of our founding fathers said that uh, a two to, a two party system will be the death of this country. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. Uh, because yeah, it really limits us as far as you know. I mean, who we did, are. Uh, maybe it's just because of the fact that we're so we're s so engulfed in this. But I don't remember any other presidency where party lines were so thick. I, I, I never, I could never, never in my life have I ever seen or experienced party lines being so thick. I feel like my mind is so muffled um, because this has been going on for four years. But I do specifically remember saying that during the 2016 election, I'm like, it wasn't like it wasn't like this last time. You know, no, it wasn't when it when it was Obama versus Romney. I didn't feel that kind of hatred. When it was Obama versus uh, McCain, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel that. There was some of it for sure. There's always going to be some of the fringiness, but now it just seems like fringe versus fringe, and and it shouldn't. It, it's it's baffling. I wonder how much of. I mean, a lot of it is obviously Trump because Trump is a fucking psycho, 
and I feel like every week it's just proven more and more and more. There's so much evidence that he is a piece of shit that it's hard to even like express how much of a piece of shit he is because there's so much evidence. It's like, where do I even start? You know, yeah, you or, can't. Like, you can't even. You can't even keep it straight in your head, so you no. just like forget. And they're like, what has he done? And it's like, oh, Jesus, I don't even, like, how do I even start? Like, what do you want me to do? It started from the very beginning. The first thing he did was that fucking pipeline and, like, destroyed native land. Like, that was the first course of action. You know, like, it goes all the way back to the beginning. And just, he he called, this should be enough for the Republicans right here. The fact that he calls his competition, like, third-grade bully terms, like, he's just a bully, like, he's so unprofessional, and that should be, like, the first qualifier of being a president, is professionalism. And Trump is not professional at all. None, whatsoever. It's it's insanity, dude. I I, I don't even know. We've had celebrities become politicians ronald mm-hmm. reagan was a celebrity yeah. before no, he became yeah. no, president of the united states but even then it wasn't to uh um the caliber that we're experiencing right now and you're right it's week after week it's the same f up and i honestly think jake he gets off on it i really think he gets off on it because if he is not if he's if he's not getting off on the fact that this is blatantly obvious and that the truths are out there, if he's not getting off on it, then he really does have a screw loose. Maybe that book that his, his sister wrote is true. You know what I mean? And, and, and it, it just seems like everything that comes out, everything that's revealed, he's unshaken by his 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 base is unshaken by this yeah and i don't know where where in the american conscious did we lose morality where it, i don't get it it's striking uh the resemblance between trump and his supporters and just straight up cults Makes me think of, uh, you know, Ch- Charles Manson, you know, or or Jim Jones, you know, where these people, like, it's very obvious these people are bad people, but you're so locked in, like, you just, yeah, you're you're so locked in, like, you just can't get out. I, I mean, a lot of people when he first got elected were saying like, oh, this man is Hitler. I don't think that's a joke anymore. Like I don't he, think it's a joke either. And when he first ran for president, when he first said that he was going to run for president, everybody thought it was a joke. Everybody yeah. thought when it came down to the debates, he was going to bounce. Here we are four years later and he's in over his head. He clearly is incapable of doing this. And the fact that the Democrats tripped over themselves, couldn't put two feet in front, couldn't put one foot in front of the other when it came to this situation. So the Democrats are, they couldn't, they couldn't um, impeach him. They couldn't do it. You know what I mean? It's like, it seems that he almost seems untouchable. And, and he's built his world around him to the point where you can't get to him. You, you, you literally can't get to him. I thought about this. There's one simple thing that has been missing from his entire presidency. And tell me if I'm wrong in this viewpoint. Has Trump gone on any late night television show? Not, not that I know of since he's been elected. Obama, I can't tell you. Even, even uh, shows that ridiculed him. He went on. Mm-hmm. He was on TV a lot where we were able to see his personality. Him and Michelle. Same thing with W. And I yeah, love w seeing even. W on, on TV, on Jay Leno's couch, on David Letterman's couch. Hillary Clinton, even when even when Trump was running for president when it, during his campaign, I don't think he did any late night television. His he, was whole, on, he was on Jimmy Fallon, I know for sure. Okay, that's one. But he hasn't been out since we have not been able to see any type of personality. And the thing is, is that 
he may actually be doing he may actually be doing some things good but even, the stupid things keep coming to the forefront that's a great point because even when it was mccain and uh what's her name palin yeah and and snl was just railing palin like, killing her you know and i think that was the name of the porn too <laughs> Raylan Palin, uh, <laughs> but they were just like they were taking her to task, you know, with the the whole Tina Fey impression and stuff. I can see Russia from my house, all that stuff. Uh, she went on the show, yeah, and like made a big joke of it. She's like, whatever, ne- man. She it's went on with Tina Fey, yeah, and and everyone's like, who's who? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you just gotta make light of it. That's called professionalism. That's, you know? yeah, and That's you know what, what I'm talking that, about. That connects to the American people. Now, Sarah Palin and and uh, Senator McCain, the late Senator, the, the late great Senator McCain did not uh, win the presidency. However, the man that I have known, because he's our our Arizona state senator, John McCain, it was great to see his personality. It was great mm-hmm. to see Sarah Palin and Sarah Palin ha- hasn't let up. She did Mask Singer last season and was well, a... Well, she also had a reality show and... Was a but pink, so did Trump. <laughs> she was a pink bear. She was a pink bear and she sang Baby Got Back and she twerked. Now, if, now dude, I saw... You know who I also see personality coming fr- front, uh, to the forefront? Kamala Harris. Yeah. Kamala Harris walked down off of that airplane in some chucks... And a bis and a pantsuit. You know what, Kamala? If you happen to hear this, stay with that look. That's a hot, fun, relaxing look. Business suit, but still professional with yeah. the chucks. And yeah. I mean, that right there tells me that this lady seems to be down to earth. And I have a prediction, Jake, and I'm going to deliver this prediction on the Jake and Corey podcast. No other podcast that I'm a part of has had this prediction. I'm going to make this prediction. When and if, if and when Biden is elected, Kamala Harris, we will have the most popular vice president in the history of vice presidents. She will be more out front than Biden will be. I just I just have that prediction because of her personality, because of her ability to engage, because of the fact that she understands, because of the fact that she is relatable. The big separation between Biden and Harris, even though it's a separation, it's what's going to make them a great team, is that Mm -hmm. Biden is really, he is a politician. Kamala Harris comes across to me as a person, then a politician. And it's going to be the same thing. The same effect that Michelle had on the country is the same effect that Kamala Harris is going to have on the country. That's my prediction. Mark it, time stamp it, write it down, tattoo it on your left butt cheek. Yeah. Um, she just seems cool as shit, bro. Harris Obama 2028, baby. Let's Dude, make it happen. What happened if in 2028 we got Kamala Harris running for president and her vice president, Michelle Obama? That's why I said Harris Obama, baby. <laughs> Harris Obama, 2028, baby. It had never happened. Michelle has said on her podcast she never has any hopes of running for office. But Dude, people man. love her, though. She she could totally win. Um, Yeah, you were talking about how Palin did uh, Baby Got Back and twerked. I'd love to see Trump do that because that man's got a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> that man's ass is the fattest thing I've ever seen. I just want to smack it and watch it jiggle all day long. Oh my god, um, that's disgusting. You just <laughs> sexualized the orange. You it's just not sexual. Sex- just, it's it's like literally like it's like smacking cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> And it Please. would probably make it make the same noise. <laughs> oh, 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 oh God! That's the yeah, th- Jake. Please, please, I beg of you. I've never asked this before. Please title this episode "Smacking Cotton's Cheese." Please. <laughs> oh you know God. that ain't gonna happen, friend. Thank you very much, Jake. Yeah, why? Why? Yeah, well, well, I won't come up with any more ideas. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. Um, 
Yeah, man, it's it's frustrating, and it's like how how much can you rail on someone before it's just like, like what? It's like I'm, it's like in Zoolander, right? When when uh when when Will Ferrell is like, it's like I'm taking freaking crazy pills because like Zoolander kept doing the same move, you know? Yeah. Every, but that's how I feel. Like, is no one else seeing this? Like, am I insane? I feel yeah. like it's pretty fucking obvious what's happening, and uh, no one seems to give a shit. Um, and then there's these fires going on. Oh, the fires. My God in heaven. Listen, I have s- gone on record on uh, my other show that these damn gender reveal parties are stupid. Yeah. And this is the second one that has set California on fire. Really? Yeah, the gender a gender reveal party a few years back started a started a a forest fire. And then one of the fires out of the many that are burning in California right now was started by a gender reveal party. Yeah, I knew about that one. That's insane, dude. Like <laughs> Yeah, for one, why do it that way? And for two, gender reveal parties to me just don't make much sense. You could just post it on Facebook, man. It's fine. Yeah, and if you, you know? don't want, how about you? How about <laughs> how about you reveal the gender soon as the doctor pulls it, pulls that thing out of your yoo hoo, yeah, and then you, you go. go over and you count the fingers, you count the toes, and then you count to see if there's anything protruding, if it's an Audi or if it's an any. How about that be your gender <laughs> reveal? How about you do yeah. it that way? You know what I well, mean? Or just stop being trendy and just be a regular set of parents. That make a baby, know what the baby is, you paint the, the, the nursery pink or blue, and you call it a day, and then after the baby comes out, you fleece all your friends for presents. Yeah, or or you can just say uh, on Facebook, hey, we're having a boy. That's it. That's all you need to do. If well, you, how about if you, you re- just, just stop having kids? Stop having kids. Why would you <laughs> want to bring a kid into a country that's run by Trump in the middle of a pandemic? Stop having sex. True. You know, co- True. put a condom on it. Why would you want to have a kid right now when you've True. got where you got where you can't even protest, where black people are getting shot and killed on a daily basis? Why would you want to bring a new human being into this world? Think about that. Why? Because you want to have 45 minutes of a good time with with your legs in the air? No. Think about what that child is going to have to live through in, in the next 25 to 45 to 70 years of its life. Think about yeah. where this world is going to be in 70 years. You want your kid to have to deal with that? Put a condom on. Interesting thing about uh, that fire in particular, because um, there's actually multiple fires going on. Multiple. Some- multiple. And like it's it's heading up into Portland, and it's it's getting bad. We it's so bad that we live in Phoenix, Arizona, and we can see the smoke here. And it's like, and that's we're how, we're also on fire too, Jake. We have yeah. we have we have about two or three fires burning in Arizona. Yeah. And the fact that we didn't get a monsoon season, we did not have any heavy we got like rains. Two two things of rain, yeah. and it was and it brought winds, and that's about it. We have had a drought of all droughts, and if we're having the drought, California is definitely having the droughts. But I will know- say, I will say, I, I I feel like, and this is very Arizona specific, but uh, I feel like over the past year, until like this year specifically, but like the the previous like two three years, I feel like we got like a ton of fucking rain. I don't know I, if I'm crazy. It, no, I, I agree with you. I'm with you like on that. I was, always, I was like, climate change has to be happening because it's raining a lot in Phoenix, Arizona. But then this year happened and it's been dry as fuck. Um, We've also just, gotten snow in the lower bowl. And when I say the lower bowl, I'm talking about the Phoenix area. We had mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, I posted um, a video of hail that, yeah. made, that literally made Phoenix look like it had a whiteout. Yep. You remember that? And that was just a few years ago. And yeah, now like here we have the past nothing. few years were crazy. And now it's like, it's just dry as a bone again. So I don't know if that's going back to normal or not. <laughs> that may I, just be us going back to normal. I don't know. We had um, over, I believe it was 60 days, over 60 days of temperatures above 110. Yeah. And we had and, a few days of 120s. And it was, it was ridiculously, um, 
hot and these fires are burning. Now, Arizona does have some fires, but Jake, you're right. Um, it's turned our high elevations or our high skies red, which mm -hmm. um, blocked the sun out a little bit where everybody was posting up these red suns pictures during the sunset. But it's kind of beautiful, but <laughs> it is kind of beautiful. Yeah. But then a friend of mine sent me a picture from uh, California and he sent me the picture in the text and he wrote under the uh, under the picture. He said, I feel like I'm on a Hollywood um, movie set you know, an apocalyptic set because it looks that, that hard. Now what Californians are experiencing versus Arizonans is that the California air quality is ridiculously horrible. The smoke that we're getting is so high up that it's really not affecting our air quality on the ground. We're just seeing it in the air, but needless to say, the whole West coast is affected by this Oregon, Washington state, and then when the jet stream moves, and now I sound like a meteorologist, when the jet stream moves, now the tip of Idaho and the Montana and the Dakotas are going to be getting the red sky. This is insane. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say about that fire set off by the, the gender reveal was that one specifically is in a like national forest, right? Yes. And, it, and it's burned, what, like? Over a hundred thousand acres or something crazy like that. Ridiculous amounts of acres. More than more than any other fire. I believe and it's one of the largest fires in the history of California. Yeah, so wildlife just fucked and it's now spreading into houses. Luckily it hasn't been too many of that, but it's still growing. Last I checked it was like sixteen to twenty percent contained. Which so that's not super good. But the interesting thing is um Republicans and I, I believe Trump even said this. It's like, this is happening because those Democratic states don't know how to handle their states or, you know, take care of their business. And the interesting thing about that one, the gender reveal one, is that's a national forest, meaning that's Trump's jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I wish I had a sound effect of a bell or some applause. Because yeah, come on, yeah. come on, man. Yeah, like fires. It's like you can only you can only do what you can do. You know. Yeah. Uh, At the end of the day, and you know the reason, you know, because that was the other thing is like when COVID first hit, um, people were like, "Well, New York is the worst state, and California is the second worst state, and and Seattle was the the first one to really have a bad issue because." And it's because they're democratic states and it's like, no, they just have a shit ton of people there. And you know why they have a shit ton of people there? Cause people want to live in democratic states because they're fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which begs the question why the fuck we still live in Arizona. But then you look at those states and they've, they've gotten, you know, it's still like iffy, but like, especially California, it's a bit iffy, but like they've gotten better ish. But then it went to Arizona. That's a red state. It went to Florida. It went to Kentucky. You know, it's like these are red states now. Uh, <laughs> there's no excuse for it. Trump yeah. is having fucking rallies. It's like, come on. Like, are you guys dumb? Of course it's going to spread in the big cities first because that's the place with the most population all close together. Especially, especially when Trump is not telling you that there's an issue in February, and we didn't lock down until mid March. Like, are you fucking crazy? Like, and we oh only God. locked down every state locked down on their own. Every state locked down at a different time. Why? Because the federal government, the White House, never demanded or never put in place a nationwide executive order. What did other countries do? Countrywide executive order to shut down. Don't care what your municipalities, what your different cities, what your different territories say. If you are part of this country and I am this lead, this country's leader, I say you lock down. That's why other countries were able to get a hold of this thing faster than we were. Yeah. And now we're having an eviction crisis, especially in places like New York and California with really high rents and stuff. Yep. And, you know. 
I'm sure Trump is going to use this as, well, look at what the left is doing to their people. But really, this is because of Trump's poor, like, he hasn't taken care of it. And yes, it does fall on the shoulders of some of those state people. But, like, Trump is the one that gives us the stimulus money to take care of this stuff. You know, this is a national crisis. It can only be solved if Trump is like, okay, here's money so you don't have to fucking pay your rent if you're fucking out of a job right now. And, like, let's lock down so we can actually open up. And, like, Republicans have this, like, weird... Not Republicans. Trump supporters have this, like, weird narrative that, like, the Democrats just want everything to be shut down for some reason. Right, right. It's like, no, and and they have this narrative that they want to open up, but, like, because of them, we're taking longer to open up, so whose fault is this really? You know? And it's just, it's fucking frustrating, man. The fault lies at the root. Who knew this about this? Who was in contact? <laughs> insert insert with- Trump. China. <laughs> <laughs> who China. knew that who was in contact with Wuhan? When when dude was was flossing with the bat's ass, who knew? Trump. That's the person that's to blame. Trump, Trump knew. And here's he, my here's my here's my second question. Um, I want to know how he's going to blame, um, the super spreader in Sturgis on the Democrats. That's not a Democratic state. That's a red state where Sturgis takes place. Which, which with scientists are now, oh, he won't because scientists are saying it's a super spreader event. So and, speaking, speaking of uh, super spreaders, not to derail you, um, I'm sorry if I, did, if I just derailed you, um, but see, speaking of super spreaders, have you seen that football started this week? Like NFL football. Um, um, yeah. I know you don't follow football, no. but I wanted to bring it up. Because they're rolling out a bit different than basketball, where it's, as far as I can tell, they're still going to different stadiums. and Yeah, they're still playing in different stadiums and home. Some of the stadiums field. are still allowing some people in. and Well, they said the, one, the, the, the game that happened, the first game that happened on Thursday night, I believe they had a, where they were playing, and I'm sorry if these numbers are incorrect but i believe the stadium seated 72,000 and they had 16,000 in the stadium and they were socially distant um i, I will say i watched the game cuz i i am a football fan i can't yeah, deny I, it i didn't watch uh i don't like to talk about how i'm a football fan because i feel like it takes my street cred down a bit but um <laughs> <laughs> you have no street cred your street cred is as much as mine is and it i takes have my no gamer street cred. cred it brings my gamer cred down i guess oh God. um my nerd my geekdom down i guess <laughs> um so i don't like talking about it too much but um so I watched the game and it did seem like everyone was pretty spread out, but like the difference between football and basketball is like on the field of football, there's like, there's like 50 dudes, you know, like there's like a ton of dudes out there. And then on the sidelines, there's even more dudes Mm -hmm. because there's gotta be backups for the dudes that are on there and then backups for the backups of the dudes that are on there. And it's just like, I don't, I don't like really Sunday is when we're going to really see it. Thursday was just one game. Sunday, we've got tons and tons of games. So we're really going to see what happens on Sunday. Um, I don't see this lasting long, though. I don't. Well, the people on the field, I believe, are being tested on a continuous sure. basis. But sure. that's not going to stop. the. But it takes one person. It takes. It just takes one. And that's not going to stop the. Um, that doesn't mean that the people that are in the stands are being tested on a daily basis. There was a kid that. Um, disappear. Well, the continuous travel of these players to go oh, well, yeah. from state well, to state to go to all these different stadiums as well. It's well, I think the players, um, and we'll, it, it, and it's yet to see; it's unknown. Um, but having them go from state to state, being on planes, if they're not traveling on the same plane, and the NFL definitely has the money to buy them private private jets yeah. private jets that that's the only one that they they travel on but i believe that there was like no cheerleaders there was no mascots no. um you know but you know you see that the people were so, the the fans were socially distanced maybe in the seats 
But that doesn't mean they were social distance at the part where we didn't see the concessions, the yeah. parking, the Bathroom. entrance, the bathrooms. There's there's lots of ways. And then all you got to do is have one person in that stand close enough to that field where they expect. I, I actually left my home last week because I had some car problems and um, I went to the dealership to have my car serviced. And I didn't go inside the dealership. I refused to go inside because, yes, all the employees were wearing masks, but there were some customers that weren't wearing masks. So I didn't want to be inside the the uh, the the, um, the the building itself. So I stood outside, sweating my balls off, but I stood outside. But then I was standing by a wall, and on the other side of the wall, I took my mask off for just a brief second, and I smelled cigarette smoke. And I'm thinking to myself, cigarette smoke comes out of the lungs that could very well be that could very well have coronavirus spores in it mm -hmm. so i immediately moved out of the way put my mask back on and that smoker was at least 10 feet away from me on the other side of a wall and they have and and and, and, and one hospital i believe it was john hopkins shown proof that a live coronavirus spore was found on the floor in a hospital 20 feet away from a coronavirus patient. So if you have those people that are in the stands, there may be social distance by six or 10 feet. There's no guarantee that somebody isn't going to sneeze, cough or get or cheer to the point where it makes it down onto the field. And then now we've got another spreading situation on a player. And then that player has it, doesn't know they have it because they may be asymptomatic. And then they get on the private jet with all their other uh, players. And then we got a breakout. So the coronavirus is basically like fucking army crawling across the fucking <laughs> floor now. Jesus, this thing it, is really advancing. It, uh, well, they, well, if he didn't play it down, we would have known this. But we it, it's just that the precautions, it just doesn't seem right right now. It doesn't seem right right now to have fans in the stands, whether you're at 10 percent capacity or whether you're at 5 percent capacity. The threat increases by the number of people that you have around you. And you're talking about 16,000. I don't care if there's six if there's 16,000 people in a in a space where it seats a million. There's still a potential of the fact that there's airflow. I don't know if that was an outside stadium. Who knows? The risk is just there that you shouldn't take. Yeah. Well, and I think it depends on the, on the state when it comes to people in the stadiums and stuff. Um, so just to pivot here, um, in more horrible news. Um, so Netflix, uh, I don't know if you've heard about this. I know you haven't because I actually already asked you, but, um, so Netflix dropped this show. Um, called cuties. Uh, the little know, about the little oranges. <laughs> no, but it is about little things. Oh, um, it's about children. Um, uh -oh. oh no, and oh, no. the poster came out a few months ago. I remember it coming out and it kind of being a big deal. Um, it's a French movie. Um, but so the poster came out a few months ago, and the poster was just these little kids and they're dressed sort of um provocatively and it's a little weird um the director was like oh that's just gotta be netflix being weird about the movie um you know just trying to be weird and start some controversy about the movie the movie holy totally shit are you seeing the poster i just googled it and there are Kids in 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 bikini, girls in bikinis. Yes, they are eleven year old girls. One is uh, on her knees with one hand down and the other hand on her butt. One girl is squatting down on her feet with her legs open, looking at the camera. Another one has her had knees bent with her hands on her thighs and her butt out like she's twerking. And then there's another girl that's standing there like a finishing pose. These are kids. They are 11. And so I, I didn't watch it 
but I saw some scenes from it. Is it still uh, on Netflix? It's still on Netflix. They're doubling down on it. Fucking uh, hell. So I watched some scenes from it, and I really wish I didn't. Um, no, the poster is not a lie. Like, that is the movie. The movie is about these girl, this, like, good Christian girl, Catholic girl, and then she gets into a dance troupe, and she's, like, juggling this, like, her being Catholic and her doing dancing, and then they're like, oh, we can really elevate ourselves by, like, being more sexual. Like, they literally, look like that's- sluts. Yeah, that's what the movie is about. It's about being more sexual. And Netflix's whole thing is like, no, but the movie is about not sexualizing children. Because at the end, they do a really sexy dance, and everyone boos, and they're, they're like all embarrassed, and they have to deal with it or whatever. And it's like, yeah, in theory, I get it. I get what, it, what it's saying. Don't sexualize children. But what you did in the process was sexualize children. Hmm. And if you watch some of these scenes... The way it's shot on these kids, it like zoom in, it zooms in on their butts and like gets all close. And like dance scenes go on for like three to five to six minutes long. It's so fucking disturbing. So there's been an outcry and people defending this movie as well, defending it for the fact that, yeah, the, the, the message is it's bad. But my takeaway is. Why would you subject me to that? I already know it's bad. Right. You know? Right. Like, that's fucking disgusting. Like, yeah, it's gross. So basically what I'm saying is cancel your Netflix account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. Ca- I won't cancel my Netflix accounts over one movie. Uh, but- uh, yeah, I think I think I- one movie is enough. No, there are several movies that are out there that people could find offensive. I'm not saying what you're. This I'm not is downplaying different. what I, you're saying. Listen, that there listen. is definitely. Uh, it seems like it's very sexualizing children in their attempt to say and not to sexualize uh, children. I am all about offensive art. You know, be as offensive as possible. Post that shit. You know. What do you think this show is? Child pornography. Yeah, no, no. It's different. Child pornography is different than offensive. Is this child pornography, though? I haven't seen it, so I can't really argue. Dude, it is so fucking close. Like, to... I would, I would categorize it as... Yeah. Okay. I'm I think, not going to disagree with you, but after what you said, I can't tell you that I'm going to go watch it. No, and that's kind of almost why I didn't want to bring it up, because I don't want to, like bring people to watching it but like you know dude the people who are going to be watching this are those creepy 50 year olds who want to like fuck little kids you know it it's sick it's disgusting i bet donald trump is watching it (laughs) (laughs) oh come on Ah! hey that's one good thing we can say about the orange slug is that he doesn't seem to be a pedo you know i i mean if there's any good thing that we can say about him is he, he's not a pedo there are i mean you gotta how do we some, know that there's been he would there's been connections with him and jeffrey epstein oh yeah that's going true. to jeffrey epstein's island and him and jeffrey epstein were friends for 20 plus years mm, you got a point there jake i tried to get around it but and oh. and and the fact that when his girlfriend got arrested he's like i wish her luck i've known her for years <laughs> that's what he said i've known her for years i wish her the best it's like <laughs> good luck with that sweetheart yeah like it's fucking gross dude no trump is totally pedo uh, <laughs> allegedly allegedly yeah. um i don't know i i don't see myself canceling my netflix account but i do see myself not watching something like this um based off the fact but you know what if i was just a, if i was you know like like I am, if I just was scrolling across Netflix and I saw this, um, I probably, if I was just looking for something to fill some time or burn some time off of the, the, the capture picture itself, I, I would never click on anything like this. And I do judge a lot of movies when I'm doing kamikaze movie watching on Netflix. I do judge a movie by its movie poster. Yeah. And, and and the screen capture. And if I would have seen this, there would have been no way that I would have clicked on anything like this. Yeah, the point isn't that you're going to click on it, though. It's the point that they're putting it on there for someone who is. And they objectified those little kids. 
Yeah, because it's and not it, like, but they aren't American like the, kids. It's a French movie, right? So what? No, I'm just saying. Is it? A, is it? A, is it a French movie? It's a French movie. Does it, it have is, subtitles and shit? Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. See, I never would have watched it anyway because I don't like to read movies. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people are like, "Well, French culture is different," and it's like, um, first of all, let's not blame it on the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, second of all. If that's their culture, they should probably think about changing that. Uh, I know that's maybe offensive, but um, yeah. I would agree. I would agree if, 100%. If that's your culture, fuck your culture, okay? <laughs> um, but I, I, I don't think that is their culture. No. And it's, and, and it's not like these kids were 16, which is still wrong and disgusting, but they were 11, which is fucking... Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to think about it, man. Yeah. I, I don't even want to think about it because you know what? I I had a kid that was that age at one, at that time, and what the parents of these girls for a paycheck sold out their girls. Think about that. Think about that sick, demented mindset where you're like these movie directors and movie producer wants to portray your girls in this light. And you're okay with that. If these girls are 11 years old in real life, their parents had to clearly give them permission to do this. And they sold their, their budding adolescence for a dollar. They, they really hoard out their children in a sense, <coughs> you know, yeah. I would, I would, I, there'd be no way I would never that's, be, I don't even that, want my kid doing what he's doing today. And he's that's 20. true. And that's fair. And that's valid. But also, Netflix gave it a platform. You know? Yeah, Netflix is 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 making a, a dollar off of it too. Ne- so. Netflix endorsed it, you know. And when the backlash happened, they doubled down. This isn't some normal cancel culture shit, in my opinion. This is this is wrong. Like this is this. But is aren't different the than- artists gonna aren't there, aren't there gonna be artists that are gonna step up and say like they get mad when? when uh, Instagram or Facebook deletes a nude artistic photo off of their profile. Isn't this kind of like in the same vein of artistic expression? Sure. But they're 11. Like that's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference. Like if like there's that movie love that's on Netflix and the movie love straight up has full penetration in it. Um, It's another French film. French just love doing weird stuff, I guess. Weird sexual things. But the movie Love has full penetration in it. There was an outrage about it because those are full grown adults. Right. You know, and it's like they, they, you know, there's an argument to be made about objectifying actors or whatever. But that's totally different than child pornography. You know what I mean? So that's just kind of where I stand on it. Like, it, I, I've seen people defending it saying that there is a message to this movie and it's artistic and it's shot beautifully, which sure, maybe it is shot beautifully. Maybe the message is clear, but from the scenes I saw where you have a 30 or a three minute dancing clip of 11 year olds where you're zooming in on their asses and they're like humping the ground and like grinding and like, it's, it's just not right. It's That's just, just, I'm disturbed by you just saying that. Exactly. Yeah. And that's how everyone should feel. I mean, Fuck I have, I have a, I have a daughter and she's, yeah, she's 19 now, but I, I mean, not my biological kid, but she's still my, my, my princess. And when I look at, when I look at all four of my children as a parent, there is just, there's just no way that there is a there's no check that's large enough to that would get that would prompt me to say, yes, utilize my child in this artistic expression. There just isn't a check out there because when I still look at my kids and they're they're 19, 20, 20 and 26 now. When I look at them, I still see five and seven, eight and 12 you know what i mean i still see those little round innocent little faces except for that middle one that middle one i swear is a shepherd for the devil but nevertheless <laughs> i still it's see my one I, I still see my babies you know and i don't yeah. i question the parents why would they allow their children to even be a part of this yeah. type of quote but, fingers autistic artistic expression 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, you got to question the parents, but then, but I have nothing to do. I'm not, I'm not giving the parents money. I don't give the parents money. I do give Netflix money. Yeah, that's true. But Netflix offers a whole lot. I mean, I'm not defending Netflix. They may offer a whole lot, but as soon as they're putting like, you know, you know, if they put a snuff film on the fucking on Netflix, I'd probably cancel my subscription. Now, what was that movie that you said had full penetration in it? What was it called? It's called Love. You should check it out. I um, will. <laughs> just to pivot before we end the show. Yes, something pivot, that, pivot. Yeah, that seems to be our favorite word now. Pivot. Your, I started it. Yeah, um, yeah. Everyone says transition. I like pivot. Um, you know why? Because it rhymes with divot. Yeah, I like to. Oh. Um, <laughs> Corey's filled with divots all over his body. Hey, um, but yeah, uh, I don't know if you noticed this on the on the show last week. Our YouTube post of the show totally got botted. It got botted. How did um, it get botted? Within the first five minutes of me posting the show last week, um, we got over. 35 comments and they were all of like different scantily clad women um some of them the same picture but different names <laughs> and uh Clear all the comments bot. all the comments were love this uh i love this you love me back uh you know like just weird things like that i didn't realize that was a th- thing on youtube and then i went and looked today and only only 5 of them remain so I um I didn't see that because I don't go back and listen to the show because I don't like the way you edit me. But <laughs> I didn't know that botting was a thing on YouTube. Yeah, I me mean, either. I just thought that was super weird. I hum the bars. I hum three bars of a Beyonce song on YouTube and I'm banned for three years. You know what I mean? But they, yet <laughs> yeah. these bots are just, you know, t- taking uh running rampant on post. Yeah, I mean, it upped our view count, so that's cool. Yeah, there you go, until <laughs> YouTube goes in there and figures out it was a bot, and they uh, lower down the, the viewpoint or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't see it. They're, they're going to they're gonna ban our channel for having bot views. <laughs> Bots someone... that they let in. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're probably going to take any advertisement that you have on your post and put up an advertisement for a website that fights bots. <laughs> yeah. Sounds Jesus. good. Well, Corey, that's the fucking show. Let's get the hell out of here, huh? Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. Um, so yeah, make sure you check out this show every Monday. We post a new one every single fucking Monday. And then on Tuesday, we do the Loner Gamecast. Check that out every single fucking Tuesday. Um Also, also, I did a review of Mulan, and everyone should go watch my review of Mulan. Super interesting. Also, PlayStation. Boop, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Please stop saying place. Please stop saying also. Also. <laughs> and please, folks, um, vote. Vote. If you need a website that is has no partisan affiliation, no uh, party lines, vote.org, not affiliated with Jake and Corey podcast, but it is a resource that I have found very beneficial. Vote. You can check and make sure that your voter registration is still active and you can check to see um, if it has all your current information, your address and where and how you should vote in your individual uh, state. So please, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the window for registering to vote is quickly approaching. Please vote. Vote. It is your voice. All right. You done, Corey? Uh, I got to take a shit. I hate you so much. <laughs>